Today I'm going to talk to you about titrations and pH curves, and you can find this information on, in section 16.4 in your textbook, um, and we're going to be doing these in the lab, both in a simulation and um, in an actual lab um, later in this unit. Alright, so the first thing is what is an acid-base titration? So an acid-base titration um, and is when you have an acidic or sorry, a basic or acidic solution of known concentration, and it reacts with either an acidic or basic solution of known concentration. So if it's basic, um, it would react with an acidic solution, and if it was acidic that you started with, you would um, have a basic solution. Okay, um, and then often, and the way we're going to be doing this in the lab, um, is you can either use a pH meter to monitor the pH as your titration goes, or frequently people will use an indicator, which is a substance that's color changes based on the pH. Okay, <clears throat> And then usually you pick an indicator that changes color near the equivalence point. Uh, so the equivalence point in a titration is the point when the number of moles of base is stoichiometrically equivalent to the number of moles of acid. All right. So if these are both, if you have a monoprotic acid and a base that just has one OH, then this would be when there's an equal mole um, of each. Or if you have a diprotic acid, um, then you would need twice as much base to get to the equivalence point. All right. And then um, the first one we're going to talk about is titration of a strong acid with a strong base. Just as a reminder, these are the strong acids and the strong bases. You need to know them um, because the AP test expects that you know which ones are strong and which ones are weak. All right, so if we want to consider a titration with 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid and then um, 0.1 molar potassium hydroxide. So in order for this, um, for us to understand this titration, first we have to write our balanced equation for what's going to happen in the reaction. So that would be HCl aqueous plus KOH aqueous um, goes to... KCl, which is the salt that we form, and that's aqueous, plus H2O liquid. Okay, And since we have a strong acid and a strong base here, uh, we just have a, an arrow going in the single direction. This isn't an equilibrium reaction. All right, so what's the pH of a solution before KOH is added? So here we're only thinking about what the pH of the hydrochloric acid solution is when we start. Okay, so since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, the concentration of HCl is going to be equal to the concentration of H3O plus because all of it is going to react. Okay, so um, doing that, we know that the um, pH is just going to be equal to minus log of um, the concentration of HCl or concentration of H3O plus, and so that's just the minus log of 0.1 molar. Okay, so if we take the minus log of that, you just need to use your calculator for this, um, you get a pH of 1. All right, so this is a very acidic solution, as you would expect, because it's a strong acid. All right, so what's the pH after 20 milliliters of KOH has been added? So if we have 20 milliliters of HCl and 20 milliliters of KOH, and they have equal concentrations, we are now at the equivalence point. We have a stoichiometric um, equivalent ratio of these two things. And so when you have a strong acid and a strong base at the equivalence point, the pH is going to be equal to 7 because we will have an equal amount of H3O plus and OH minus in our solution. Okay, so for this one, we don't even really need to do a calculation. You just need to know that at the equivalence point, if you have both strong acid and strong base, the pH is 7. This is not true if you if one either the acid or the base is weak, but we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so what's the pH after 40 milliliters um, total of KOH has been added? All right, so um, here the first 20 milliliters just reacted with the HCl to make a neutral solution. So we essentially at this point ha just have the 20 milliliters extra of KOH that we added after we got to the equivalence point. But the concentration of that is no longer 0.1 because we've diluted it a lot. So our total volume now is the 20 we started with of HCl plus the 40 KOH we've added altogether. So we can just use M1V1 equals M2V2 to figure out our concentration of KOH in the solution. All right, so that would be 0.1 molar, which is what we started with, times 20 milliliters, which is the extra we've added since the equivalence point, is going to equal our new molarity, which call, we'll call M2, times 60 milliliters, because that is our volume of our total solution now. All right, so if you do 0.1 times 20 divided by 60, we get that the new concentration is 0 0.033 molar. All right, and because KOH is strong, that is equal to the concentration of OH minus. So all of it breaks apart um, and makes 
OH minus and K plus. Right? So um, you could do a, a couple of things here. You could either calculate the H3O plus and then calculate pH that way. I like to, since we just have the OH minus concentration, calculate the pOH. Uh, so we just take the negative log of 0 0.033 and that is 1.48 when you plug it in your calculator. And so then now our pH is going to be equal to 14 minus the pOH. So 14 minus 1.48 gives us a pH of 12.52. All right. So now the next thing we want to do is just draw the curve for this reaction. So what we're going to do is um, start here at 0. So when we hadn't added any, our pH was 1. So we'll have a point here on our curve, right? At 20 milliliters, that was our equivalence point, so that's going to be equal to a pH of 7, so I'm going to say that's right about there, All right? And then when we got to 40, uh, that should be 40 on that graph there, sorry. Um, when we get to 40, the new um, pH is 12.52, so that would be up here somewhere about between 12 and 13. Okay, since I don't have lines, it's a little hard to see. All right, because this is a strong acid and a strong base, the pH change is going to happen very rapidly. So if we were to draw the curve, we would start here at 1, and we'd come here, and it would go up pretty pretty quickly and then level off pretty quickly as well. So this is um, what the pH or the titration curve for a strong acid versus a strong base is going to look like. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing, but with a weak acid and a strong base. Uh, so the first thing we want to do, so we have 50 milliliters of a 0 0.150 molar solution of acetic acid, and the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right, so what is the pH of the solution? So we haven't added any base at this point, so we just need to figure out what the pH is. Um, <clears throat> and just like before, pH is the negative log of the concentration of H3O+. Um, because this is a weak acid, not all of the acid is going to dissociate. And so we need to set up an ice table to figure out how much it's going to. Um, so if we have, um, I'm just going to write as a generic HA plus H2O goes to A minus plus H3O+. Plus. All right, we start off with 0 0.150 molar HA and nothing of the other two. Uh, and then, so we'll do minus x and plus x and plus x for our change. So then at equilibrium, we have 0 0.150 minus x. And for a minus and for H3O plus, our equilibrium concentrations will each be x. Okay? So Ka is equal to um, the concentrations of our products. So that's going to be x times x, or x squared, divided by 0 0.150 minus x. All right, and all of that is going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, just like we've done in past equilibrium problems in the previous unit, I'm going to assume that x is small relative to our starting concentration, and so that will simplify the algebra a lot here. Um, so if we multiply both sides by 0 0.150, we get that x squared is equal to 2.7 times 10 to the minus sixth. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to 0 0.00164. All right? And you can, if you do the math, you can figure out this is less than 5% of what we started with. So our assumption is valid. All right. So now if we just take the negative log of that, we get a pH of 2.79. All right. So this pH, you'll notice, is higher than when we started with a strong acid because a weak acid doesn't dissociate as much. And so the pH is not going to be as low. All right, so what is the pH of this solution after 25 milliliters of 0 0.15 molar NaOH has been added? All right, so um, especially with these weak acid problems, I like to do this other kind of table where we do before the addition, what the addition was, and then what we have after, just to keep track of what we've got. All right, so here when we're adding strong base, we're going to have our HA plus OH minus because OH, or NaOH is strong. And so that's going to react completely to make um, H2O plus our conjugate base, which I'll just call A minus. All right. Um, so before we do the addition, um, and it, in these tables, we have to use moles, not the molarity, because we're adding volume. And so if you uh, just do the molarity, you can get things uh, messed up a little bit. So our initial number of moles of HA is going to be the 0 0.150 times 0 0.05 uh, liters because we're starting with 50 milliliters. So we start with 0 0.0075 moles of HA. We don't have any OH minus in our um, initial solution, at least not any 
appreciable amount. Um, H2O we don't need to worry about because it's a liquid and we have um, no A- minus to start with, we're assuming, all right? Um, so what we are adding here is um, 0 0.150 times 0 0.025 liters of OH-, minus. so that comes out to be 0 0.00375 moles of OH-, minus, and that's the only thing we're adding. All right, so after this reacts completely, we'll have no OH- minus left because it's all going to react, um, and then the HA that we'll ha have left will just be the difference between those two, so that's 0 0.0075 minus 0 0.00375, so that gives us... Um, a final number of moles of 0 0.00375 for HA. Uh, and then all of the OH that reacts is going to make A minus, and so we're going to get 0 0.00375 moles of A minus. Right? So now what we have in our solution is um, a certain amount of the acid and a certain amount of the conjugate base. So this is essentially a buffer. Okay, so we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to find the pH. So our pH is going to be equal to the pKa uh, plus the log of the concentration of A- minus over the concentration of HA. And since we have equal number of moles of HA and A-, minus, this whole term here uh, is going to cancel out because the log of 1 is 0. All right? So when we're at um, this point here where we've added half the amount of base, we sometimes call this the half equivalence point. Um, at the half equivalence point, the pH is going to be equal to the pKa. And so this is useful when you're doing an actual titration um, because you can find the equivalence point, go to half of that volume, and see where your curve is if you've collected pH values along the way and figure out what the pH of your acid is. Or sorry, the pKa of your acid is. All right, so now we're going to do um, if we have added a total of 50 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar NaOH. And this, if you look back at what we started with, is going to be the equivalence point because we have equal volumes of the acid and the base, and they have equal concentration. So we'll have equal moles of acetic acid and NaOH in our solution in this case, okay? So when we had a strong acid and a strong base, the pH was 7, right? In this case, the pH is not 7, so let's calculate what it is, All right? So we're going to set up our before, add, and after table like we did before. All right, so we've already calculated that we are starting with 0 0.0075 moles of HA. Here we're adding the same number of moles of OH-, minus, so that's what I'll put here in my add column. Um, and then after the reaction happens, both of those are going to react completely. We'll have no HA, no OH-, minus, and all we'll end up with is 0 0.0075 moles of A-. Minus. All right, um, this will then be able to react with water as a conjugate base and so what we need to do is write that equation and that's what we're going to have to use to solve to figure out how much um, or what the pH is going to be. All right, so we have um, A- minus plus H2O um, yields HA plus OH-, minus, all right, and initially we're going to have a concentration of um, 0 0.075 molar A minus, and this is because um, we've now doubled our volume, so the concentration is going to be half what it was before. All right, so we know we have 0 0.0075 moles, um, and then we have that in 0.1 liters uh, or 100 milliliters, so that gives us 0 0.075 molar A minus. We have no HA and no OH minus, all right, um, so we'll have minus X and plus X and plus X for our change. And then the equilibrium will have 0 0.075 minus x, x, and x. All right, so if we write out the equilibrium expression for this equation, we'll end up with x squared over 0 0.075 minus x. And this is actually our kb, not our ka. So first we have to calculate what kb is. So kb is equal to kw over ka, right? Our kw is always 1 times 10 to the minus 14th and our Ka in this case is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right, so that gives us a Kb of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10th. Okay, so if we um, plug that in for our Kb here, we make the assumption that x is small relative to our starting concentration. All right, so then we can get x squared is equal to 4.2 times 10 to the minus 11th. All right, and then if we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to 6.48 times 10 to the minus sixth. And that is also equal to our concentration of OH minus, okay? So that is what's going to be, tell us what our pH is, right? So we can do this one of two ways. Um, 
generally I like to just calculate the pOH first and then subtract. But um, So if we want to calculate the pOH, that's going to be the negative log of 6.48 times 10 to the minus 6, which gives us a pOH of 5.189. Right? And then our pH is going to be 14 minus that number, which is 8.81. Right, so when we have a weak acid and a strong base our, at our equivalence point, we're going to have a substantial concentration of the conjugate base, which means our pH is always going to be above 7. Right, So if the acid is weak, the uh, pH at the equivalence point is going to be closer to a base, so above neutral. Right, and then the last one we're going to do is beyond the equivalence point. So let's say that we've added 75 milliliters total of the 0.15 molar NaOH. Right, so essentially we've added 25 milliliters beyond the equivalence point here. Right, and because OH minus is so strong, the A minus that's in there is really going to have very little effect. Um, on the pH. So what we now need to do is, based on how much NaOH we've added and how much has not reacted, we need to figure out what our concentration of OH minus is. All right. So our initial concentration is 0 0.150. We've essentially added 25 additional milliliters that didn't react. So that's how much of that we added. And that's going to be equal to our new concentration times our total volume, which is 125 milliliters, because we've added 50 of the weak acid and 75 of the strong base. So that's 125 altogether. All right, so M2 is going to be equal to 0 0.030 molar NaOH, um, and that's our OH minus concentration because it's a strong base. All right, this one I'll do the opposite way. So the other way you can find the pH if you have the OH minus concentration is to do um, the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus is always equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Okay, so if we plug in our OH minus concentration, we get that the H3O plus concentration is 3.3 times 10 to the minus 13th. And then if we take the negative log of that, we get a pH of 12.48. All right, so now because we've added so much extra base, our pH is really high. We're getting close to 14. All right, so now if we want to go ahead and draw the titration curve for this reaction, this is going to be our weak acid and a strong base. Um, at zero, we started with a um, pH of 2.79. So that's going to be right here in this range here. So just kind of above, above two, below three. Okay, um, and then after 25 milliliters was added, we ended up with a pH of 4.74 because that's our pKa, All right? So that's about there, All right? And then um, at our equivalence point, we had a slightly basic pH. Remember that was 8.81, so 50 milliliters was our equivalence point. Um, so our point here on our graph is going to be about there, all right? And then at 75 milliliters. Uh, now we're way up in the basic range um, at 12.48, so that's going to be in this general vicinity. All right, so when you can already see that this curve looks quite different, um, the way this works is it curves up slightly here to the pK, and then it comes up like this, and then levels off. All right, so you can see that this curve, when we have a weak acid and a strong base, is much uh, less steep than the curve that we looked at uh, before. And now our last kind of problem is um, a weak base with a strong acid. So here I'm just going to do um, how to calculate the pH at the equivalence point um, just because it mirrors the other ones um, but just just to make it clear. Um, so what's the pH of, uh, so we have a 100 ml solution of 0.25 molar um, sodium butanoate and it has a Kb of 6.58 times 10 to the minus 10th. So what is the pH of the solution after 100 mils of 0 0.250 molar HCl has been added? All right, so we need to do our before, add, and after table to figure out um, what we have. Um, so if we start with um, 0.25 molar uh, sodium butanoate, but we only have 100 milliliters of it, then that means we have 0.025 moles of sodium butanoate. So that's our B minus here. Um, we don't have any of the other things. So we're going to add 0.025 moles of H plus, 
um, which comes straight from our HCl, our strong acid. So after the reaction happens, we have no B minus left, we have no H plus less, everything has become BH, the conjugate acid of um, our base. So the amount, the number of moles of BH would be 0 0.025 moles. Um, and then we now have 200 milliliters, so we'll divide that by 0.2 and get a concentration of 0.125 molar for our base. All right, so now we set up our ice table for, um, oh, sorry, for our conjugate acid. So we set up our ice table for BH reacting with water to make B minus and H3O plus. All right, so our initial concentration of BH is 0.125. Uh, and we don't have any um, of the base or the H3O plus, right? So we do minus X plus X and plus X, and then our equilibrium concentration of BH is going to be 0.125 minus X, and for B minus and H3O plus, it's just going to be X for each of those, right? So now this is BH acting as an acid, so we need to find the Ka that goes with this equation. So that's going to be equal to the Kw divided by Kb, uh, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, divided by the 6.58 times 10 to the minus 10th that we got in the problem. And that's going to give us a value of 1.52 times 10 to the minus 5th for our Ka. So that's equal to x squared, uh, which is our B minus times H3O plus, divided by 0 0.125 minus x. Again, we're going to make the approximation that x is small relative to our starting concentration. So we're just going to get x squared is equal to um, 1.90 times 10 to the minus 6, and then take the square root of both sides, and we get x is equal to 0 0.00138, and that's our concentration of H3O+. Plus. All right, so for this one, it's even easier. Uh, we already have H3O+, plus. we just need to take the negative log of that, and we get a pH is equal to 2.86. All right, so in this case, you can see that at the equivalence point, the pH is always going to be acidic or lower than neutral. All right, so to summarize all of that, um, at the equivalence point, if we have a strong acid and a strong base, the pH is always 7. If we have a weak acid and a strong base, it's going to be greater than 7, which is slightly basic. And if we have a strong acid and a weak base, um, we'll get a pH that's less than 7, which is acidic. All right. All right, so then the last thing I want to touch on is just using indicators um, to do titration. So you could um, take your... Uh, do your titration and measure pH all along the way, and that would work just fine. Um, but one thing that we sometimes do as a shortcut is use an indicator that changes color um, near the pH where we expect our um, equivalence point to be. So the end point for um, an indicator is the point at which it changes um, from one color to another. All right, so uh, here we've shown um, a titration using an indicator called phenolphthalein. This is a really common indicator, and you should know that when it's acidic, or when the, the pH is below about 8.5, it's going to be colorless. Um, at about 8.5 is the end point for phenolphthalein, and it's going to be a very light pink there. That's what you're going for when you do a titration. And then as you add more base, it turns really dark pink or magenta colored. All right, so we will do um, titrations using an indicator in lab as well. And it's important to note that this particular one works well um, for strong acid, strong base titrations because the endpoint is pretty close to neutral. Um, and it's a really distinct color change from clear, colorless to, um, to pink. So it's pretty easy to see. Other um, indicators might change from yellow to blue, for example, so you are looking for kind of a green in the middle, and it's a little harder to see. But you always want to pick an indicator that has an endpoint very close to uh, the pH that you uh, expect to see for your equivalence point.